Hey guys, so today we're going to learn how to make our units detect when there's an enemy unit in front of it and for it to start attacking when the enemy unit is within a certain range. So the first thing we'll want to do is define an attacking state for our unit. So we can just uh, make that a flag, attacking equals false by default because they'll be walking. Uh, and we'll probably also want to consider uh, what is an attacking range. So I'm going to actually pass this in as a parameter up here in our init method. And once we do this, we have to remember we got to add this um, in each of our child classes. So for this specific unit type of elite sword infantry, I'm going to give it an attacking range since it's a sword of maybe just 60 pixels. All right, now if you have spear units later or some long weapons, uh, you can increase this number if you want. So the next thing we want to consider is uh, how does our unit know who its enemies are? Well, if we go back to our battle.py here, when we defined our battle class, um, we had set up these two variables, uh, which are sprite groups, to contain the units deployed by the player and as well as the units deployed by the enemy. So since we pass in the battle object at, in the init function to our unit, our unit actually knows um, it can actually retrieve information about the battle. So up here, we're also going to add something. Um, so if, if our unit is deployed by the player, which means its, it's side is left, okay, then the enemies for this unit are going to be the enemy unit sprites from the battle. Okay, so this is the player side. Um, otherwise, if this unit is actually deployed by the enemy, then its enemies will be the player's units. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. Uh, and we'll also want to check in our uh, update function here uh, how many of these units are actually within the same slot because right right now we we're all deploying on in the same vertical slot but eventually we're gonna have to distinguish right because we don't want to be attacking an enemy who's deployed like two slots above us because we're not actually facing uh, each other so let's do this let's define uh, enemy sprite same slot as a sprite group and we're just going to loop through all the sprites in all the enemy sprites and we'll check that if our slot of our unit is equal to the enemy sprites slot. And if so, uh, we'll want to add that to the enemy sprites same slot sprite group. Okay. And how do we know now that we need to start attacking? Uh, let's see, what is this? Did I make a typo? So the, uh, okay, I made a typo. We're going to add an S here. Alright, so we'll know to attack if the unit is, uh, the, sorry, the enemy unit that's within the same slot as us is within the attacking range. So how do we do that? Well, we can come down here and uh, first let's define something which is, uh, remember this is a logic that we use to walk our units. So well, first of all, if we are attacking, we don't wanna walk, all right? So we wanna say if we're not attacking, then do all this stuff here. And furthermore, uh, if we're not attacking, we need to check to see if we should be attacking. So we will loop through all of the units, sprites, sorry, unit sprites, that are in the same slot as us, and we'll check for a simple condition. Let's just say uh, our center, distance between our center and their center, sorry, is within our attacking range, okay? So if this condition is true, which means we have a unit in the same slot as us within our attacking range, then we'll set our um, our state to attacking state to true um, 
since we're gonna that's gonna kick off the attacking animation we want to reset this right because we want to start the attacking animation from the first frame uh, we can check to see how it's doing so far so deploy one from there deploy one from here all right so uh they stopped walking and they're now just walking into each other so this tells me that we need to do something in our animate method here. So let's see if, uh, yeah. That's because down here we haven't defined what to do if um, if we're in an attacking state. So let's do that right now. Um, okay, so we're gonna wanna update this variable no matter what. Now, if we are not attacking, then we'll do this. So this is uh, the logic that we use to update the walking animation. But if we are attacking, then we'll want to do the same thing, except instead of using walking animation, we want to use the attacking animations that we had already loaded before. Uh, so change walking to attacking. All right, so let's try again. Deploy from both sides. All right, so they are attacking each other. Uh, now you see some something weird, which is that this guy, he keeps bouncing back. Okay. Now the reason why this happens is because uh, when this guy extends his sword, um, his the, the 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 width of that specific frame is a lot wider than when he's just standing there, which means the center now, if if we're let's say that uh, this fight's position is right here. When you set the center to that position, it's going to look like he bounces back. Okay, and that's just because uh, all of the different frames within the animation have the different width. Uh, so there's one thing we can do to fix that, which is uh, instead of updating the sprite uh, directly, we are going to define something up here uh, that keeps track of its position. and. For example, for that spy where he's extending his sword, uh, what we want to do is make sure that the right side of the spider is always uh, fixed at the the, uh, the unit's location. So let's put that together with this. We'll define something called uh, position X and then position Y. Uh, so I'll set these to be the X and Y that we pass in by default. Now I can get rid of this part because uh, that's just a repeat. And then we go down to our update and let's see here we are updating the center of our rect, right? So instead of doing this, what we're going to do is update the position variable first. And then we'll set the left of the rect equal to the position. So here we're going to say position x, update, and then uh, the C node is deployed from the left, so we will set its position x. All right, and similarly, we we'll want to do that here. So position x, update that, and then this guy's deployed from the right, so we'll set the right into position x. If we go back to our animate now, uh, remember this is when we're updating uh, the animation. We want to do the same thing here. So let's see if I can copy and paste. Nah, we'll just type it again. That's fine. So if we're deployed from the left side, then I want to set the right dot left equal to the position x, and then if you want as well, we'll do the update the center y equal to the position y, which hasn't really changed right now because we're still deploying within the same slot. Uh, so do the same thing here for units deploy on the right side. We want to set the right uh, side of the sprite to the position X. So now what we should see is that uh, it is no longer setting the center of the sprite when they co collide. Instead, it's setting the right side and setting the left side. So now when they clash and they do that, oh. What did I do? 
Oh yeah. Sorry, I forgot something here. <laughs> I need to update the rect because we updated the image. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, let's go, let's go. Clash, clash. All right, there we go. So that looks like what we want it to be. Um, so in the next part, well, I'll show you uh, how we can um, make the units take damage and eventually die if their health falls to zero.